So let's put this one to the back. I reckon he has just said that it's okay to have your family in your garden two metres apart because he's basically just told people to use their common sense. You see others um, from outside their household, but also oh, you me up so much. encouraging large groups to gather um, and, uh, and encouraging things that the, um, the scientists tell us would increase the risk of the spread of the virus. So the principles are really clear. What we're trying to achieve, I think everybody understands, you know, the people I've spoken to understand what stay alert means. They understand what we mean when we say control the virus. It means these <sighs> principles, which are that you and He's that you don't so annoying, so patronising. Um, uh, but I also understand the pressures that this puts on people and the, uh, the yearning, the yearning to see members of your family. Hannah, Hannah says, uh, why can children be looked after by childminders but not a member of their own family? Well, the, the, again, this is a balanced judgment on how to... Feed me, feed me! Oh, it's on film now. So, this is my nest. I've made it using wire and wood. <laughs> You're still, still as chubby. The more you weigh, um, 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 the higher droop you go in wrestling. Oh, look at Sebby. So cute. That's what his hair will look like if he doesn't get it cut again. As you've probably seen out of the window, we've got a for sale board out. Um, and we have got a house on the market, and apparently from today, people can come round and view it. One, it's a complete shit tip, and I can't be asked to tidy up right now. Two, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and I don't really want random people walking around my house. And three, I don't want to be in a position where I have an offer, and then I've got to go and look round other houses and have the stress of that, as well as everything else that's going on. So, mm, seems a little bit mad. I know people want some positiveness, but it seems a bit silly to me. So today is, is it Wednesday? Yes. Today's Wednesday and Benji's teaching us today. He did his lesson planning last week. You might have seen, I think I filmed him doing his lesson plan in his... PE shorts and his red braces, and today is our lesson. Hand over your mouth or elbow. No. <laughs> Crying. Or something that was probably in the okay. No. Being late. Lucky, lucky, none of you have been late. Okay, up you come. And Will Will today is going to be a I think, I think you might need Will, eh? Oh, girl, girl. Oh, okay. Well, come. Come here. Come here. Come here. Sit down. Can anybody point to where Willow's colon is? Oh, um, Willow's colon. Here? Oops. Can you point to her stomach? Right there. Here. Yeah. Come on. Yes. So I'm currently in the house on my own bar willow for the first time in about 10, 12 weeks. Matthew has taken the children out for a drive and possibly to go and run around somewhere. 
where there isn't anybody. The sun's gone in, so hopefully there won't be as many people. And we've been told that you know it's okay to drive to a beach, but we we aren't just a beach. We are a car park. We are a sort of destination, and there are uh, you know there's a, a local community around us that we have to think of. Um, so the places for the island's only NHS hospital. Called a Wind Racers Ultra, it's a massive autonomous aircraft that's remote control. And with a cargo hold the size of an estate car boot. It's capable of carrying out a very significant payload of uh, 100 kilos uh, for 1,000 kilometers. Um, and it's, uh, it's capable of flying at nearly 100 miles an hour, so it's relatively fast. And most importantly, it's cheap. <laughs> The drone was originally designed to deliver food to remote areas of Africa. But Southampton University, a consortium of companies called Solent Transport, have combined to adapt it to move supplies of PPE to the Isle of Wight at the request of the government. In Britain, this is uh, the first of its type. We're the first people to have done a flight beyond um, a visual line of sight and deliver medical facilities between hospitals. The drone wasn't supposed to be fully operational for another four years. It's been given special permission by the Civil Aviation Authority to get airborne. But is the drone any match for a helicopter, which could also travel quickly to the island? The helicopter is very expensive, and actually we need to use the helicopter for saving life. Um, but the drone can back that up. The drone is, 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 is a workhorse. The COVID-19 story has driven invention, change and creativity. This drone combines all three to link mainland and island in a new air bridge of high-tech innovation. Duncan Kennedy reporting there. Now it's Ah, does it make it well, easier? easier? Is it easier with nothing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go. You're probably not dyslexic. It's Bob's birthday, should we have a party? What do you think, Lockdown Bunny? Yes, please, I think it's a really good idea. And so did Ketchup. And even Grey Bunny agreed. And so did Primrose the Teddy. So they went off to get some food. They had some mackerel and oranges and all sorts of delights which they ate up. With full tummies they fell asleep, but then they remembered they had birthday cards for Bob. They got them all out. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. 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 Pub quiz time, but I feel shit. In a hotel on the outskirts of Ukraine's capital, we found the lost children. So if you just come and have a look in here. These are the 35 babies born here in Ukraine, their parents all around the world. Being looked after, you can see the nurses looking after them. Desperately sad. They're on their own because Ukraine closed its borders in response to the coronavirus. It stopped the babies, born to surrogates, being claimed by their biological parents. We've got the Chinese baby, Italian baby, Spanish baby, Arabic. Yeah. 
that's the thing. That's good. <laughs> the bottom. <laughs> Got tired. Very good. Who's next? Who's next? Yeah, if you send them and then I, I'll, Mom, like next. I say, I'll put them together and then send them to Grayson. Uh, museums were encouraging people to be turned into works of art, and mm -hmm. I thought I'd have a pop at it, so I've been out there turning Isle of Wight residents into works of art. So, so hang on. So you'll go up to somebody and go, do you know what? You, you'll make a crack in Mona Lisa. Just sit there and don't smile too much. Well, what have you been? What, what have you? What have you been doing? Well, funnily enough, one of these series I did was uh, Mona Lisa. I've turned her into Corona Mona. That's still to go online. <laughs> uh, I've got a backup of about ten. That I've got a Photoshop, and people will be saying, "Where are our pictures?" But I've got some up online already. Um, Lucy Bell made in a fantastic. Uh, Picture of Daydream by Alfonso Mucha. Um, you've got to go and have a look, look at it on my okay. website. It was superb. She painted the background. She recreated the picture superbly. Paul Armfield, who used to work at our kiosk, approached me and said, could he become... Well, done, Kev's done this and Lucy's done that. How did you find these people? Did you put, put it out on your social media or, or online? Or did you, how did you find them? Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a Facebook addict and I like, uh, I've always been uh, good at networking. And uh, Lucy came from the uh, swimming group and her friend Sandy, who did a fantastic girl with a pearl earring. She's actually a lady without a pearl earring, but it looks similar. Yeah. Um, they were in the outdoor swimming group, which I photographed at Christmas. How do I get in a Zoom meeting with an outdoor swimming group? It's crazy. <laughs> it wasn't even swimming. We were virtually swimming, just chatting to each other. But they came up with us. You know, I, I, I threw it out there what I was doing. They volunteered with us. And that's mm -hmm. and Kevin. He, he just um, I threw the idea, idea out. And I've got some fantastic um, friends. Um, this isn't going to go away. We're going to have to find ways of living with it. There's lots of things we don't know about it, like how it affects your immune system. And symptoms it causes aren't always the obvious ones. I was just reading something this morning about people who've been ill for like six, seven weeks with coughs and... Well, not even coughs, just sore throats. I mean, to be honest, a lot of what, like I've got... Um, which then makes it really hard to know what is coronavirus and what isn't coronavirus and what is post-coronavirus and what is coronavirus or hay fever or anything else. I, I, I've started having those sinking feelings again of is this ever going to go away? And just when you think it is, you hear things that imply that it's not. And then I think, well, I know, I know in my heart of hearts that whatever happens, we'll learn to live with it. Like when AIDS um, was first discovered, that was really scary. I was a teenager, really scary. And although, you know, you could avoid doing things to get it so it wasn't quite the same it was still a killer and but but now it's not and cancer we we live with cancer and we we take cancer for granted and we all know things that can help us not get cancer in the same way that we all know things that will help us not get coronavirus um you know, it will be something that we just learn to live with. You know, it will change things. I used to think it would change things for the better, but I don't think it really will now. All it's doing is creating that divide between rich and poor. It's just making it bigger and bigger. It's like driving a wedge in it. Everything, education, socially, food, housing, work, death, everything. It's it's a massive divide. I think, unfortunately, this came at a really bad time for us and our political situation. And who's running the country? I think things could have been very different if it had come at a different time, with a different leader, who had different priorities. One scientist giveth and one scientist taketh away. That's how it seems. You'll read something that gives you hope, 
and then you'll hear something that takes it all away. So this is the second time I've been in the house without anyone in, what, two, three months? And it feels like a breath of fresh air. I don't mean that in a nasty way at all. I just, um, it's just exhausting having st like stimulus I suppose all the time and it's like oh it's like when you're really hot and thirsty and you have a ice cold glass of water it's been a hard day today it's been the first day since the start of all this that I felt Um, I felt really down, I felt teary, I feel like nothing's ever going to get better. You know, my logical head says, you know, things might change and it will be alright, we've got a nice house. You know, even if we live like this forever, it's nice compared to so many people. But sometimes your logical head... Um, is irrelevant when you're just feeling that feeling of what's the point and the sadness you feel for the children. I think I made the mistake of listening to songs from my teenage years and thinking, well, what's what's life going to be like for Hetty and, and Benji? What's their teenage years going to be like what's their childhoods now going to be like what's you know Izzy she was going to take a gap year and, and travel and you know what what's the day when everybody is depressed everybody I've spoken to is depressed there is no hope people are getting anxious getting agoraphobic terrified of going back to work the um the world's mental health is gone down the pan Monday the 18th of May the road outside is really busy this morning Really busy. I mean, lots of people obviously going to work. Good morning. Good morning to you. Um, so, Brown, we've, okay. we've got had quite a few questions uh, for you, so I'm going to run through them. Uh, Mike asks, and lots of people will want to know the answer to this question. Uh, please explain how many reception children can be in a class at one time, what the pupil teacher ratio should be. So this is the topic of discussion at the moment, is um, children going back to school uh, the Monday after half term. Um, split opinion, most people I think think it's too early for many reasons. Too early because our infection rate is still going up, particularly on the Isle of Wight. Um, the numbers are really high. Um, no doubt they will bring it home if they get it and give it to other people and it's not fair on teachers to put them in that position um, it's going to be so stressful for the children and the teachers but on the flip side I do understand that this isn't going to go away in a hurry and kids do need to go back to school especially deprived children So, but I think they need more time
than three weeks to sort it out. Unless you're a really good head teacher and school and you're completely on it, it's going to be really hard to work out logistics. But anyway, that's the topic of discussion at the moment, is kids going back to school. Hmm, police van. It's funny, I've been filming out of this window on and off, really to to show the time scale of the plants. I think when I started, the magnolia was flowering. And the marshes look different. They're not wet anymore. They've got all their tufty grass bits. I do love our view. It does change. But we're still in here. We're still in lockdown, despite the fact some people are going to work and we can go out all day. It's not over by any stretch of the imagination. Watching, we were watching our, my COVID-7 last night because um, Matthew hasn't really seen any of them and now they're on YouTube. Um, and I realised how I'd let myself go seriously. So, this morning, I've shaved my legs for the first time in about 10 weeks. I've put makeup on, I've put earrings on. Um, I've just made a little bit more effort with my clothes, although I'm in my denim shorts. I'm out of the baggy trousers. Morning, Benji. Morning. Morning, Willow. Morning, Willow. Morning. Yeah, morning. Morning, Hetty. Morning, Mum. How are you? I'm okay. I'm eating cornflakes. Thanks. That's okay. She like my top. But I've made an effort. Thanks. I hate people slurping cornflakes. But bum, here we have Bumhead being constructed. They won't go together. You could always tack it you before you sew it properly. What you done? <laughs> go show Daddy. Go show Daddy what you've done. What you done? She, she couldn't do it. <laughs> she was being nosy. <laughs> you. But people who can talk and draw at the same time. Yeah, I can talk and draw at the same time. What would you like me to talk about? I did. See, actually, if you sketch it once and then sketch it again, normally the second sketch is far better than the first one because you know what you're doing, you know your subject. Um, just to, to give you an example from yesterday, we had a, a former footballer, Luke Chadwick, come on the programme and he was talking about some of the abuse that he received, about the way he looked when he was playing football. And one of the presenters on that programme, who particularly was um, scathing towards Luke Chadwick, Nick Hancock, also came on the programme and offered a, a full uh, apology and took responsibility and said he, he felt a level of shame about the way that he acted. Now, when he did that, I think a lot of people uh, re responded and thought, the fact that he was open and honest about some of the issues that he had had and the mistakes that he had made then cleared that up quite quickly. I think lots of people will listen to you this morning, hearing you say that you're proud of the government's testing strategy and wonder why you can't admit some of the issues and some of the mistakes that have been made over the last few weeks. And if you were able to do that, I think people would then accept in this unprecedented situation that you can't get everything right, but you are willing to admit that you did make mistakes. So Dan, I've said early on we had a very limited capacity and we were effectively going from a standing start. I think it is good within six weeks that we've got up from a capacity of about 2,000 a day to over 100,000 a day. 
I think that's uh, pretty good, actually. Uh, sorry, uh, two and a half months, I apologise, to the end of April. Uh, and I think that is good. I'm not saying that, uh, it, with hindsight, could we have had more capacity at the start? Could we have done some other things differently? Uh, it's just that there is an element of how we get going in that... Uh... I know you've got to go on to do other interviews this morning. Just on that, um, the other, one of the other points made by Greg Clark and this um, committee of MPs is about uh, greater transparency they've called for on scientific claims. Schools remains a, a huge issue for millions of people, many of them watching this morning, thinking about uh, their own children and whether they're going to send them back to school on the 1st of June. And they say there's still a lack of clarity on that advice. Would the publication of that scientific advice, particularly around schools, can you see why that would be such a help to many people watching this morning? Well, I think at the weekend, uh, the Department of Education did actually publish a summary of the advice uh, and evidence that was given to them to help come up with this policy. Um, so SAGE is publishing uh, information regularly on the gov.uk website, uh, and uh, we are guided by the science. Uh, it's not done in isolation at all. Of course, ministers have to make the final decisions on these different elements. Uh, but as has been said all along, that we will be continuing to carefully monitor the transmission rate, the reproduction rate are, uh, making sure that's below one, and also the number of infections. So those are still key elements, uh, but it's important that if we want to... Um, do you want this thing here or not? Yeah, that's our water bucks. Okay. So what about this one? Well, does it matter? Because everything's just thrown in there anyway. But it was before you could actually come in here and actually get in here. You couldn't when I looked in it. It's oh, too it's scary as Because it was being tidied up. Quick, shut Daddy in and lock the door. Yeah! There's good pattern. Tricky day today, home midwives. Everybody's reached their peak. It's slowly, slowly dwindled away. We're having more strops and more tantrums. I'm really more concerned about their mental health now than I was even two weeks ago. They're both missing school, they're both missing their friends, they're both missing the structure that I can't give them. They need to go back to school. But they're not going back until I know or I can see that they'll be safe. So for the, about the millionth time I'm having to think or rethink how we're going to do this every day to keep everybody happy. We were trying self-led learning this week and that obviously doesn't work. Especially with Hetty. So now we're filling up the kayak so they can play in it, which I think is at least making for a happy house. Surely you can't smell the slow worm. That's it, that's where you want to go. Up. Go up. Don't fall off. Maybe you won't fall off. Yesterday, and something that surprised a lot of people was that. Hold.